So what I want to take a look at here is something called Azure Identity Protection. So we'll need to get access to that via the Azure portal. So just go up here and do a search for Identity Protection and you should be able to see it there. Now the idea behind Identity Protection is to evaluate the users and the sign-ins against uh, known risks. Now a lot of these risks are maintained by Microsoft in a proprietary way. Uh, so they're not going to divulge exactly how those risks are evaluated, but uh, you can certainly use this to help you determine whether your users are at risk. So in the identity protection area here, you'll see that we have an overview. Now, if we had more users, we would see any uh, users that are at risk and sign-ins and so on, but there's not a lot of detail here in this demo tenant. All right, and you'll see here we can change the date range if we want to do that, customize that to suit our needs. Now, the idea here is we need to go in and create uh, these policies. So the first one here is a user risk policy. So think of a user risk policy around things like the user's credentials. So let's say that those credentials were leaked on the dark web, then they're compromised and that will be considered uh, a certainly a very, very high risk. So we can, again, notify ourselves of that and incorporate that into the policy. So the way that you do that basically is to go in and nominate the users who will be part of this policy. So in this case, I've included all users, but also make sure that you exclude a break glass account outside this policy so that if there are any issues, you don't end up locking yourself out. Now we need to go in and determine the risk level that we're comfortable with. In this case, I'm gonna leave it as low to uh, try and get these policies to trigger to give you the demo, but generally best practice is probably uh, at the medium level. So this is the uh, level of risk that you will tolerate before the policy will be enacted. And the item that will be enacted is this area under control. So in this case, I'm going to block access, all right? So I can allow access, but I can require a password change, for example. Now, what I can do down the bottom here is I can then go in and enforce that policy. So I'm gonna go in and save that, update that. Uh, and then what I'll do is once that's done, let me go and basically repeat the same process here for sign-in risk. So again, we targeted at our users, best practices to always exclude uh, a break glass account. We can set the level here. Now remember, sign-in risk is going to deal with the actual sign-in. So you know, sign-in using an anonymous proxy, um, a poorly configured or out-of-date machine, uh, and so on. And here are our controls here. So you'll see that we can, again, block access or require multi-factor authentication. So why don't we change that to block as well and turn that policy on to enforce and save that. Now, you'll see that we also have an MFA registration here that we can also, again, require users to go through an MFA registration process. All right, very, very similar here. And again, we can, again, turn that on and uh, enforce that if we want. We'll just leave that off to keep things simple. Now, once the user connects up, their uh, risk will be evaluated and we will see any results here under risky users and also risky sign-ins. All right, we can go in there and look at all different sorts of um, ways of looking at the data, and we would have the risky detections there. Remember, there's workloads that we can look at uh, as well. And you'll see here that we have uh, the users at risk detected alerts, so we can set up a number of alerts here. So I've already got a user here who's gonna receive the alerts, and you'll see here that we can uh, change the level. So let's change that level to low, update that. We'll see that we can also receive a weekly digest of the users that are considered to be at risk. All right, so that's basically all we need to do to set up identity protection. Now, the other thing to remember is that identity protection is an Azure AD P2 feature, so you will need the appropriate licenses uh, to achieve that. So what I've done here is I've logged into a machine as a user, so the user is uh, my director account. So we go in here and just have a look. You'll see here that uh, it's already logged in successfully. It's an Azure AD join machine. It's all compliant uh, and so on. So it's all good here. All right, so you'll see here that we've joined Azure AD. We've logged in as director at ciaopslabs.com.au. Now, what I'm going to do is firstly, I'll open up uh, the Edge browser. All right, so we're gonna open the Edge browser. We'll just go to Microsoft 365. So again, the idea here is this is a, you know, a normal login as expected. Uh, from this machine. So again, all good, get access to that information 
uh, without any issues. Now also on this machine, I should have a Brave browser. So again, a different browser here. So let us open that up and log in with that process. So you'll see here that again, let's just close that tab, close that tab and we'll bring up office.com here. Take a second to do that. So it's gonna ask me to actually go in and log in because this is not a non-Microsoft browser here. I'll put those details in and fingers crossed that that should also be successful. So I've logged in from two different browsers on the same machine. Okay, and you'll see that that works uh, as expected. Now what I'm going to do to generate risk here is I'm going to use Brave, but I'm going to open a Tor or anonymous proxy browser. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is again, go to portal.office.com and then I'm going to uh, try and log in to that environment uh, using those credentials. Now the idea with Tor is it's going to proxy me or anonymous proxy through a number of relays and then allow access. The idea is to prevent tracking uh, of the actual login. So see here, it's trying to log me in, right? So now I'll put in my uh, account here as before. And let me put in my password. All right, so we're logging in from an anonymous location here and the policy uh, the risk policy has kicked in and you can see now that it is blocked it's basically saying well we consider this to be a risky login the setting you've made in the policy is that it will block anything um, of a risk level of this level or above uh, so we're not going to allow you to get into that location so really that's what uh, the idea with identity protection is all about so again the way we did that is we made sure we had an Azure AD P2 license. We then went in and set up the user risk policy, the sign-in risk policy, and the MFA registration policy. If we wanted to, we can then generate some good reports around risky users, uh, sign-ins, uh, risk detections, and we can also get alerts down here. Now, another thing to point out here is that our best practice is that if you are using conditional access, then you shouldn't be using the risk uh, policies here, the, the user risk sign-in policies. So if we pop over to conditional access, which we also have uh, in this environment, you'll see that when we go in and uh, look at a policy, so let's go and look at an existing uh, policy here. All right, so if we go in here and we have a look uh, at the conditions here, you'll see that we have the user risk and the sign-in risk now over here in conditional access. All right, so best practice is that if you do have conditional access and you are using it to protect your environment, then you should disable or not use the risk policies in identity protection. Instead, basically replicate those settings over here. So we can again go in and set this to, uh, you know, uh, low or whatever here as required. Uh, so we can go in here and configure, set that to low uh, and make that part of our policy. We can do the same for sign-in risk. So again, best practice is that if you are using conditional access, which you do get with Azure AD P2, then identity protection really is going to be a reporting mechanism more than anything. If you, however, don't have conditional access, then you can certainly use uh, the identity uh, protection information there and the policies are in standalone mode and they work exactly as I've shown there. So in summary, we use identity protection, which is an Azure AD P2 feature to evaluate both user and sign-in risk and then uh, m take action based on the analysis of that when a user signs into the environment and effectively we use that to block users whose risk is considered too high before accessing our information in Microsoft 365. Thank you very much for watching the video.